What has been your most bone-chilling, hair-raising? Let's get thee out of here. Experience? Story 1. I'm a criminal defense investigator. I had a murder case involving two brothers. The one accused of the murders was very autistic, and his brother was a schizophrenic. The schizophrenic brother lived in a potato shack in the middle of the desert. I needed to talk to him several times throughout the course of the investigation, and since he didn't have a phone or electricity, I had to drive several hours out to his house and yell his name from the fence line until he came out of the shack. This investigation lasted for several years, and over time I developed a rapport with schizophrenic brother, and I kind of got to like him. He would talk your ear off about the aliens with golden eyes and the underground tunnels that connect all the Walmarts in the country, but he was pretty entertaining, and part of me wonders how much of it was a show. Schizophrenic brother eventually gets a girlfriend. She's a tweaker who has mistaken his schizophrenia for meth-induced psychosis. I talked to her a few times in jail when she was sober, and she was surprisingly charming and insightful. The last time I go to see schizophrenic brother, it's a dark winter night and tweaker girlfriend is there. She's lurking in the shadows and staring daggers at me the entire time I'm talking to him. I cut off his conversation about the speakers and his fillings and walk back to my truck to leave. A minute later, schizophrenic brother comes running out and tells me that he wants to show me something in his shack. He's never invited me inside before, and I'm not thrilled by the prospect. The whole thing feels off to me, so I tell him I have to get going and start the truck. The look of relief on his face when I declined to go inside convinced me that tweaker girlfriend was waiting behind the door with a hammer or something. A few months later I learned that she shot him in his sleep and stashed his body in an old refrigerator. She has since plead guilty to his murder. Story 2 One time I was out in Colorado with some buddies hiking near the top of a mountain. Some bad weather started to roll in but the top was only 15 minutes away so I went ahead while they went back down. As I was getting to the top I felt static in the air and the hair in my head started to stand up. I immediately started to panic cause I thought I was about to get struck by lightning so naturally I ran down without ever getting to the top. I'm not sure if I was gonna get struck but I sure as hell wasn't sticking around to find out. Story 3 Exploring a abandoned high-rise, out of the blue my friend grabbed me by my collar from behind. I was about to step into an elevator shaft. After swearing at him, What the F? He said, Look, and I saw the drop of like twenty floors to a concrete bottom with broken metal rods sticking out. We went home. He saved my life 100%. Story 4 I worked a lot in remote areas of West Texas, servicing oilfield-related equipment. One time I was out in the middle of nowhere as usual and to the northeast was a butte, an isolated hill that's bigger than a regular hill but smaller than a mountain, but everywhere else around was pretty flat. There was one road in and out of the site I was at. At some point when I was working on a control box, I had the overwhelming feeling that I was being watched. I scanned the horizon, looked all around the butte, and went back to work. This happened a few more times within several minutes until I finally saw something move on the side of one of the rock outcroppings on the butte. I went to my truck, grabbed my binoculars, and the figure hid behind that outcropping. It was definitely a human. I glassed him for a good twenty minutes, and I could see him peek around every couple of minutes. Eventually he leaned out so far that I could see the silhouette of the barrel of a rifle slung around his back. At some point he was hidden behind his rock for a while and the next time he peeked out, I couldn't see the rifle. He had either put it down somewhere or he was now holding it. I immediately felt a sense of impending doom. The hair on my arms and neck was standing straight up. I very quickly collected my tools, got my AR-15 from behind the driver's seat and sat it on the passenger seat, and tore out of there. I sped down the dirt road, almost clipped the cattle guard and started cruising down the highway just as the adrenaline started to wear off. I remember the metal taste in my mouth and having to grip the steering wheel to keep my fingers from twitching. A few miles down the road, a maroon suburban full of guys was pulled over on the oncoming side of the road. They definitely weren't oilfield workers, shades all around, buzzed heads, all intently looking at me. I expected them to pull a U-turn and pursue me, but they didn't. I can't prove that this is what was happening, 
but I do know that cartel guys run operations where one scouts for guys working alone and calls in a group of guys to rob them of their truck and tools. Story 6. Was walking from a local shopping mall to the train station so I could go home. The shortcut went through a huge long tunnel and was out of sight from the road, and wasn't used unless you knew the area. When I got to the tunnel I looked up and saw one guy standing right at the other end of the tunnel, in the middle, just looking in my direction. Like he was waiting. Every hair on my body stood on end, I felt like I needed to vomit and before I knew what I was doing my feet turned me around and started walking fast away. He started walking after me and said, Don't worry, it's not like I'm going to rape you. I ran and walked right on the edge of a highway in plain view of cars in case he ran after me. I couldn't stop shaking for an hour. Story 7 I must have been around 10 or 12 when this happened. I was walking back home one afternoon, around 3 or 4 p.m., after strolling around the neighborhood, which was usually very safe, friendly, and quiet. I was on the opposite side of the block, the houses behind ours, which wasn't an issue because there happened to be a park that went across the whole block and connected to the other side, so you didn't have to go around the whole block so I was only a few houses away. I went through the park, a park I had played at my entire childhood, without paying much attention, when about halfway through, this guy who I didn't know, definitely older than me, wearing a hoodie started calling me. Dude, come over here one second. Um, what do you want? Come here, I just want to ask you something. Okay, ask me from over there. No, no, come over please. No, tell me from over there. At that point, another dude that was sitting next to him. Gets upset, I hear a. That's it. And they both stood up quickly and started making their way towards me. I can't recall how far they chased after me, but my instincts just told me to run like hell and I did. To this day I still don't know if they were gonna mug me, if they were just taking the piss or what was happening but it definitely scared Kidney. Story 8 In very early 2020, I was in Lumbini, Nepal. It's a small town built around this complex of ruins that was once the palatial home of Siddhartha Gautama. The Bodhi tree is located there. I was staying in a cheap hotel along a muddy road leading out of the city and was the only guest in the building. Many stray dogs roamed the streets of that quarter at night, and you'd often hear them barking or getting into fights. This one night was particularly bad. A low fog had settled on the road and the dogs were out in force, howling and barking. Out of nowhere came this bellowing roar, one so loud and sonorous, I felt it in my chest. Then, a vacuum of complete silence, all I could think of were ways to keep whatever had made that sound outside. The next day, I heard that a tiger had wandered over from the nearby reserve along the lake and eaten a few of those stray dogs. Story 9 My wife and I were on a search mission for some missing fern pickers. We were volunteers with the local search and rescue, SAR, team. We decided to stay in the search area that night and had built a pretty nice fire. We were sitting there and it was about 0200, hoping this dude would wander into camp. I had heard animals around us throughout the night. No surprise, we're in the middle of the woods. I'm used to animals stalking around outside my camp. I knew there were two animals, one one each side of us. It was at about that point when we heard a bird chirp. It came from about the place I figured one of the animals were. Then another, from the opposite side. I immediately realized we were being watched and stalked by at least two cougars. We very quickly climbed into the back of my truck. It's got a camper shell and is outfitted for truck camping. Story 10 I don't tell this story often but this seems like a good place. Back in college I used to drive up the Oregon coast on weekends, then just crash in my car when I got tired. I woke from a nap in the driver's seat, and something just didn't feel quite right. It was just dusk and the light was fading pretty fast. I yawned and stretched, and as I did so I turned my head to the side and just caught a face ducking down below my rear passenger window. I went to hit the lock button just to make sure and in my panic I accidentally unlocked the doors briefly and then locked them again. I stared at the window for a few minutes, knowing that someone was crouching just out. Of sight. Eventually, I started the car and thought I heard a scuffing sound. Whoever it was didn't reappear, but that was enough for me. As I noped out of there and pulled out back onto Highway 101, 
I glanced back and a bald figure in a red t-shirt with something wrapped around his face booked it into the woods on the side of the road. That was the end of that weekend trip. I drove the two hours back to my dorm room, white-knuckled hands locked on the steering wheel. I had to pull over a few miles down the road though to deal with the adrenaline shakes. Story 11 Ack when my son was only about a year old my husband worked second shift so I was alone every evening. We lived in townhouses at the time and had a neighbor who was a war vet my husband was friendly with. He was a little off in the sense there was very obvious PTSD and other traumas but all around a nice dude. Anyway, one evening this guy knocked on the door. I opened it thinking he probably was looking for my husband and I was just gonna let him know he was working. Dude was super drunk, wouldn't stop talking and kinda made his way into the house. He also brought his huge-ass German shepherd with him. I was trying to be friendly but I had the worst feeling in my stomach. I felt insanely vulnerable and like something just wasn't right with this situation. I kept trying to tell him in the nicest way to leave but he wouldn't. I texted my husband. Hey neighbor guy's here and won't leave, he's trashed. I feel really uncomfortable. My husband texted his buddies that lived a few apartments down, and they came over immediately. They got the dude out of the house and not even twenty minutes later I hear noises outside and this guy is trying to rip the license plate off my car. My husband's friends heard it or saw it I'm not really sure but they came over and were more aggressive about him going home and leaving me alone. And he did, so I thought. Few hours later my husband gets home and sees this guy hanging out crouched behind some cars. He goes up to him to ask him exactly what the fuck he's doing. I don't know the exact details because I stayed hiding in the house but this guy had ropes and some other weapon on him and full intentions of raping me that night. It makes me sick to think that if my husband's friends wouldn't have came over as fast as they did to help me my poor son would have watched something horrible happen to me or even what he would have even done to my child. Story 12. Hiking in the Rocky Mountains, on a trail I knew pretty well. I was leading a group of kids, maybe twenty or so middle school-aged children from the camp where I worked. I turned a corner and saw a jawbone of a deer. Pretty cool, showed it to the kids. Didn't have any flesh on it, so I assumed it was pretty old. A hundred feet further down the trail I find another bone. Femur maybe, I specialized in insect populations, not deer anatomy. This one looked a little fresher. Another ways down, another bone. I'm getting a little nervous at this point, so I explained that we should probably turn around and head back. My students all groan that they want to see more dead stuff, but I shepherd them down the train and back to camp. Two days later we got a call at the camp that someone had been attacked in the area by a mountain lion. Apparently a mountain lion had set itself up in the caves on the cliffside and it had gotten pissed when someone got too close. I'm glad we left the area, even if my students would have loved to see more dead stuff. Story 13. Driving Uber one night a couple years back. I picked up four guys from a club. Listening to them talk I realized that two guys, one of them ordered the ride, had met the other two at the club and were on the way to get coke from one of their cousins. There was an odd vibe, some of the conversation didn't seem the most linear, and I was hyper aware that these drunk dumbass were heading with two strangers to a drug deal. And I was the one driving them. I did not want drugs in my car, and I was very aware that we might be on the way to an ambush. If we'd been heading anywhere remote or sketchy I had to figure out how to end the ride. The two wannabe dealers kept trying to get in touch with their cousin via cell phone, went to an apartment just off a main street and after both had gone into the building I just said, Should we leave? To the guys and we did. I still don't know if it was just a ploy for a free ride, guys too drunk or dumb to pull off a basic coke deal, or something nefarious that didn't finish. Story 14 July 27, 2002 Skniliv Air Show Disaster I turned five years old the day before. It's one of my most vivid memories from childhood how the pilot landed ten meters away from me and my dad. He was on his knees, his parachute dangling in the wind and I remember him repeating, What have I done? Over and over. I didn't understand much of what happened. My dad only said, Close you eyes, we have to go. 
My dad told me years after that we would have gone farther into the crowd but I refused to go because my shoelace was untied. Him kneeling to tie my shoes is the only thing that saved us. It wasn't bone-chilling at the time but when I imagine what my dad witnessed that day I get goosebumps. Story 15 When I was 27 my girlfriend lived in a crappy part of Hollywood, Florida near US-1. She had a kid pretty young but the dad ended up going to jail for assault. The place she could afford was run down AF, with all sorts of addicts and genuine low lives living in the units around her. She hated the place. She couldn't move in with me because I see I was just renting a room where I lived. It was better than living at her parents though, drunk abusive dad, addict mom. I went to visit her after my shift ended at 9 p.m. Picked up some food and planned to cook for her. We were there for about an hour just sitting on the couch watching her kid play with a box. Then the banging started on the door. She looks terrified thinking it's her ex. I'm kind of freaked out also because I heard all these stories about him. Some guy is cursing, hitting something against the door hard. We don't even want to peek through the window or peephole thinking he's got a gun. We call the police but the operator is having a tough time hearing. Then we hear some other woman screaming and cursing. He had the wrong door. We hear them start fighting. Smashing, more screaming. Sounds like she's spitting and we hear punches. We're not sure if it's her or him but it's loud. 911 operator says police are on their way. The kid starts screaming because he's scared. The man outside starts banging on the door again. He thinks his kid is with us and shouts he's going to kill us for taking his kid. My GF just breaks down at this point and starts crying. Maybe ten minutes later the police arrive. The arrest both of them then took our statements. She moved out a couple days later and we ended up renting another crappy apartment but in a much better area.